a microphone has a very low level signal. The, the signal coming out of here is very, very minute. So that amp or, or head amp or gain control uh, has the job of boosting the signal up to the, where these circuits in here like it. And we call that zero dB. It's about three quarters of a volt, 0.7 volts. It doesn't really matter. Those are numbers and things that you don't really care about. And in your, with your Presonus mixer um, and the Yamahas, all the meters are marked at zero with a yellow LED. So they go from green up to yellow and then into red to let you know that zero is where you want to work. So all you have to do to set the gain on one of these uh, microphones, and this is the way you go about setting your whole sound system. You start with one mic at a time. You don't have to turn the channel on. You can start with it, everything off. Our uh, Yamahas have a PFL or pre-fader listen button on them. Um, yours will have a solo uh, button on the channel. Um, but it, it's, it's pre-fader, uh, listen, cue, or solo, depending on the, on the company that makes the product. When you push a PFL, two things happen. You'll be able to hear, let me turn the sound system off. We don't need any of that. You'll be able to hear, you'll be able to hear this through your headphones on your mixer immediately. And um, since we don't, we can't all have the same pair of headphones, I hook this speaker up as if it were our headphones. So you're going to hear what I would hear at the desk. So when you hit PFL, the first thing you'll notice is your meters are going to show up over here with a level. Now, like I said, up at zero, they start turning yellow. So I'm going to adjust this gain to get the, that, that level that I want to be at, right about in there. Now, I'll tell you, I'm the talker. I'm not the singer. So if the singer sings louder than me, we're going to have to turn that down a little bit. But at least we're in the ballpark, right? And we're, can you hear me through my, like, you can hear me through the headphone. This is the coolest thing. You ever doing a show and you want to make sure you got a microphone that's turned on? You hit PFL, nobody hears it but you and your headphones, but you hear, I'm ready to go on, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go on stage, yeah. Or you can hear them talking backstage with somebody. You know that mic's ready to go. That's your easy way to know you got a good signal. Also, if you ever hear your system humming or buzzing, you can go along one PFL at a time until, and then you know you got it. Used to be in the old days, that's how we knew we had a guitar amp, because you'd hear, and it was like, oh, cool, we got it. Or a keyboard, because they hissed. But all these new keyboards are so quiet, you've got to have somebody play them. But anyway, that's what the good the PFL's for. When you use PFL or solo, undo it. Don't, don't go to the next one without taking that other one off, because then you're listening to more than one thing at a time, and we only wanted to hear one thing at a time. The nice thing about our headphone sound in, in all these mixers is when you don't have anything PFL'd, oh, it listens to stereo out. So you'll always hear the house. So most guys mixing live sound will have the headphones handy, but not on. And then when they need for PFL, they'll just punch that up. Okay, so, so setting this level is as simple as Checking from, from here and listening to it with, with my headphones. I can hear it out by the, where the mixer is. I'm going to turn that back down. And make sure that i got a decent level. And I just do that one mic right after another. I get two things accomplished. I'm getting a basic setting for level. And I'm checking to make sure I actually have the mic connected. So it is all working. So you might want to do this before your talent shows up. Some, some guys like to do sound checks early and make sure everything's working before the talent shows up. Some people like to let the band rock and start mixing them that way. Either way you want to do it, it just takes a little more time with the band. So that's how you set your gain. That's how hard it is. And notice we haven't listened to any of the sound system. I actually turned it off because there's no need. We're not going to listen to it yet. On all consoles, when you go and look at the master faders on them, about two thirds of the way up, it says zero or the, the nominal point where it should be. And it, again, on a Presonus mixer, it's up two-thirds of the way up is where they want you to run those faders. If you look really close at these, like this, even this little mixer, um, 
The faders are marked that way across at, at about two thirds of the way up. If you'll look real close at it, all the markings as they go further down are much, much closer together. It's logarithmic. So if you pull this fader down, it goes quieter really fast. So the idea is if you're mixing down here, tiny little movements will turn that mixer up, you know, sound up and down. So you really want to be up near that zero point. So that's a good starting point for you when you're mixing. Keep them up at about two thirds. It gives you room to push it up if you need to or pull it way down if you need to. So the next place the signal goes after it hits that head amp is through the EQs. And EQ is just a tone control. It's like bass and treble on your stereo or uh, on this console we got three bands of EQ. On a Personas mixer I think you got four bands. Uh, so it's, it's a matter of how much EQ you have. But it's the same thing. It's, it's for tone control. One big thing to remember about tone controls on your board is to not use them too much. If you find yourself turning these more than a quarter of a turn one way or the other, it's maybe a bad microphone or the wrong kind of microphone for the job. It also might mean that somebody needs to reposition the microphone that's on stage so it's closer to the guitar the way it needs to be. So if you can fix it physically with, without turning these knobs, you're going to be better off. Because if you start cranking up the EQ here, then we mess up that level that we got when we set this. By adding gain or, or boost in the low end or mids, we're going to actually add it electrically in here. So we want to try to keep these as flat as possible. I don't say don't use them, I'm saying use them carefully. And if you need to really use them, cut rather than boost. Now the signal in, um, in the console flows right through, in this board, um, six auxiliary sends, aux sends, which are just extra sends. I'll come back to what those are for. But then it flows down and then you've of course got a pan between left and right. Most of you guys mix in stereo? Everybody? No? Mostly in mono? Good. Yeah. Little secret. Full on stereo mixing, only the guy in the center of the stage is going to hear left and right. Everybody else is going to be cheated a little. Everybody's heard an old Beatles record where there's vocals on one side and guitar on the other. You don't really want that for your performance. So mostly mono is a better way to go. If you're doing something as an effect, that's a good thing to go left and right, you know, or, or if you want to get a little spread, but not much more than 10 and 2, something like that. So, and like I said, it heads down to this fader. And then um, on your console and on this one are uh, bus assigns. And buses are just um, wires that carry the signal down to the master section. And you have to decide where you want to send things. So the simplest of sound systems is you're sending it directly to stereo or to a main out, to one main output. So we just assign it to ST or stereo. And I'm going to go ahead and push the fader up to zero and I'm going to turn the channel on and I'm going to turn off the PFL because I don't, we've already kind of set our level. So now, if we look at it, on the stereo output, you can start to see levels here. This is exactly what you want out of your sound system. And again, we turned off the power amp for, so that we can get our level set just right. And I told you, this piece of gear likes to work at that zero dB level, that 0 0.7 volts. You get about this much noise with every piece of gear you buy. Hiss, hum, buzz. You want to work above that as far as you can to make sure your system's nice and quiet. But you also want to make sure that you're not clipping or overdriving anything. So as long as you're in that zero range on any of our boards, the manufacturers have gotten together and said, you know, that's a good range and we give you plenty of headroom above and below that to, to get a good, uh, a good sound. So the final place when you're setting up a sound system is to turn, on the, turn the power amp back on and set this to the level that you need it to be for the room. So if I need this much gain in here, this much volume, that'll work. This is pretty good. There. 
So, you can come up and put your head in that speaker, you'll never hear hissing or humming. Because the sound system's gained properly for this um, application. Now, if this was rock and roll, and we wanted more volume, we'd have to buy it right here. Okay? But there's no reason for me to run this amplifier any hotter or louder than it is right now. Because I can still get plenty of gain, and I even have more. If we need it, I can buy more. So I did, even without adjusting the amplifier, we still have plenty of level. So the big deal is this amplifier takes that tiny signal that's three quarters of a volt or so and turns it into something that the speaker can work with that's in the range of 30 to 40 volts. So an amplifier's job is just to make things bigger electrically. Sometimes, um, some of you guys have powered speakers. The amplifier's actually in the speaker. So that attenuator is on the back of your speaker as opposed to on a power amp like this where it's on the front. Now, can you drive this amplifier to clipping even with these attenuators turned down a little bit? Absolutely you can. We can drive this so hard with this mixer as to clip the amp. This is where um, the sound system engineering side of this comes in. The amount of power an amplifier can generate is directly related to what you want it to do in the room. In other words, if it's like taking a knife to a gunfight. If you only need it for speaking, a watt a person inside is plenty of power. Three or four hundred watt amplifier, you could talk to people for days. But if you want to have music, you might have to double that. Because music's more dynamic, it's bigger, it's got more oomph in it. And the lower the frequency, the more energy you need. The higher the frequencies, the energy becomes smaller. That's why there's horns on all these cabinets to focus the high frequency so it'll come at you. So I, um, I kind of skipped over the aux sends because I didn't, we were just kind of getting the basics of how the sound system works. Um, auxes are used for a couple of things. The biggest reason for an aux is to have it for a monitor for your, for your stage setting. All your um, talent wants to hear on stage exactly w what they had set at soundcheck and it should never change. So what if you're mixing and you pull the fader down for out front, you don't want that aux in to be affected. That's why you set your auxes pre. There's two types of auxes, pre and post. Pre fader and post fader means it gets its signal before the fader or after the fader. So if you get the signal before the fader, no matter what you do to hear, that send to the monitor will always be the same. That's the way you want your monitors to be, so that your talent always feels like that monitor works just fine for them. Couple of things about monitors and, and your talent. Nobody will give you a fair sound check. They always play lighter and quieter than they do in a real sound check. And all the keyboard players I've ever met won't push the fader, the master fader on their keyboard to maximum until they are in performance. When they're doing the rehearsals, it'll be turned down some. So know this when you're doing your sound checks that you're going to have to factor in a little extra gain because these things are going to be hotter once these guys are out there really playing. Also, since most of these instruments are dynamic, meaning the harder you hit them, the louder they play, if, if somebody's excited and plays harder, it, it's going to come in here louder. So you've got to kind of figure for that. I wanted to show you guys um, some of the signal cables. You can pass these around. Grab a couple of those pass those around. These are the wires that are used for the signal side to carry that tiny little little signal we were talking about. And then this is speaker cable. There's a cable for carrying speaker. So the reason I showed you that was um, 